go to your seats. Today, amen, is graduation Sunday. Say graduation Sunday. And we're so glad that God has allowed these young people to see the success and the victories. Some of them have come through 12 years. But the real heroes in the, in the scenario is not only the students, but it's the parents. And now it's the grandparents. Give God some praise for our parents and our grandparents. And we're proud of our students, and we're going to have them stand shortly. But we've got a lady here today, and she's an encourager. Say encourager. And we want her to come up and encourage these young people. She's gone through high school. She's gone through college. She's gone through career after career. And now she is on another career and another path. She's a lady who doesn't retire. I was saying to somebody in the hallway, I think it was Smitty. Y'all don't know Smitty's first name. Smitty said, Pastor, I'm retiring next year. And I said to Smitty, I said, Smitty, I said, you're not retiring. You're just going to do something different. I said, because when you retire, you expire next. Amen, somebody? But you're just going to do something different. And she is now all over the country speaking now to the world. Her base was Cleveland. Now her base is actually the world. She is not, none other than Ramona Robinson Tyler. Let's give her a great big hand as she comes as an encourager. Thank you, Pastor Larry. Giving honor to God. Thank you, Pastor, to the entire congregation. Uh, I am just thrilled to have been asked to speak to the young graduates. I was sitting over there looking at your young, beautiful faces, and it took me back to when I was your age, which was a long time ago. And I just remember being 17, 18 years old. Uh, on the one hand, so happy that I was about to graduate high school. On the other hand, I was terrified because um, a lot of the older moms in here will, will know what I'm talking about. Back then, you know, it was my mom's mantra that I don't know what you're gonna do, but at 17, 18, when you graduate, you're getting out of my house. <laughs> I'm no longer taking care of you. So I don't know if parents today still say that. Do you still say that? Because I think somebody says, no, y'all let them live with you till, you till they're 35. That's their problem. <laughs> but anyway, congratulations. It's so wonderful but, that you're graduating. But now the hard work begins. Some of you will go on to college. Some of you will, will get right into the workforce. Some of you will, will go to tech school. A lot of you older graduates will go into grad school. Maybe you're graduating grad school. Now the hard work begins because when you leave home you won't have the security and safety of mom and dad to protect you when life gets tough and trust me life can get very tough um, I have a, a new book coming out later this summer and it talks about the many voices that we hear that can derail our plans and block our progress and it's so important that we weed out those voices, that we don't let them enter our space. I was thinking back to, I mean, there are so many voices. We will hear literally a million voices in our lifetime. Some are, are voices of good, some unfortunately are voices of evil from the enemy, things to try and derail your plans. Other times it's our own voice our own built-in insecurities that we listen to. Some of us have come from an environment where no one in our family ever graduated college, ever went on to do anything. And so we tell ourselves, no, that's not possible for me either. But you've got to start listening to God's voice. In Proverbs 3, 6, it says, listen to the voice of God in everything you do, everywhere you go. He will provide the path for you. God, I'm, not, I'm living proof that God does not want to harm you. He wants to, to prosper you. And just to give you a quick example, even with all of the accolades and awards that I've achieved throughout my career, 
there were so many voices every day that entered my space that tried to diminish me. I remember when I garnered an exclusive interview with President Barack Obama, one of the other anchors across the street had been trying to get the same interview. And when the White House granted the interview to me, that person reportedly said, oh, she got the interview because she's black and he's black. <laughs> Even though I had won an Edward R. Murrow Award, I had eight Emmy Awards for excellence. I had a 30-year career of integrity. I was diminished to the color of my skin because I earned the interview and he did not. But I knew that was the voice of the enemy trying to make me feel that I wasn't worthy. I wasn't capable. And even one night when I won two Emmy Awards in one night, and one of the awards was for the best anchor in the northern region, which included Indiana, Illinois, Pennsylvania, Ohio. When I won that award, someone who didn't win said, oh, the judging must have been flawed that night. Must have been flawed. And so you see what I'm trying to say to you. You can try to achieve and do the best that you can do, but there will still be voices that will try to tear you down. So if you hear nothing else I say today, block those out and listen to the voice of God, what God says about you. God loves you. God wants to prosper you. But keep him first. I know you get busy in school. You get busy on the job. Read the word continuously. If you're not here near Mount Zion, get in some Bible-based church and just don't leave God behind because he will be there with you when your parents can't be. Don't let anyone tell you what you cannot be. Stop listening to those voices. Had I listened to the voices, I would not have arrived in Cleveland, Ohio. You young people have no idea. When I came to Cleveland as the first black woman to anchor an evening newscast, the Ku Klux Klan tried to run me out of town, literally, with hate. I had to stand and take it so that other blacks behind me could get those jobs as well. And if you look at Cleveland television news today, you see there are many more black anchors. So don't let anyone tell you what you can't aspire to do. You can do whatever it is as long as you work hard and be determined and have perseverance. So good luck to all of you. I wish you well. And we can't wait to see what you do with your lives and how you serve your church and your community. Thank you. Amen. Can we give her a great big hand clap one more time? I appreciate those words from Ramona, her personal testimony. We'll show you what she's realized in her life is that we should never forget that God has called you to a purpose. You know, I just want to say a quick message to our graduates, to all of those that are around, and maybe even graduates that may be watching us online, is that your graduation is no mistake. You know, it's all a part of God's plan. You know, I want you to always follow the road that is called instinct. Can somebody say instinct? You see, instinct is the innate ability that we all have to make decisions, not based on what we know, but enables us to make the right decisions based on what we feel is right in our spirit. You know, God is the giver of instinct. Instincts allows us to make the right choices at the right time, putting you in the right place. You know, we say, as the Bible says, our steps are ordered by the Lord. And so there's a statement that says, out of, the, out of the heart flows the issues of life. So if you let instinct guide you to wisdom, it will lead you to the answers that you seek and to the places that you were meant to be. We believe that God will lead you to the right places. So I say to our graduates today, follow your heart. Because it is there that you'll find freedom. You'll find the freedom, as we say in the church, that the world didn't give to you and the world can't take away. 
If you move with instinct, you'll always end up in the right place. And also, before you leave here today, I want all of our graduates to know and realize that you need to spend more time, you need to spend what I'd like to say less time worrying about how to be successful. You know, in life, all we want to talk about is success and, and, and what success is all about. But you need to stop figuring out about being a success and just spend more time figuring out how to be more useful. You know, because remember this, if you're more useful, success is going to come to you anyway. If you're useful, the world will stand at your doorstep waiting to open it for you. If you're useful, job security won't be your problem because employers will look for you. If you're useful, you won't be manipulated by the approval of others, but you'll be applauded by others. If you're useful, people can't deny you because you can't deny somebody that you need. Think about it. If you're useful, others will be drawn to you and attracted to what you have to offer because they won't be able to get it done without you. So make sure when you leave here today, graduates, that you work on becoming more useful. And the last thing I just want you to do is I want you to dream big. Congregation, say it with me. Say dream big. Dream big. Dream big. Have a big goal, not just any goal, but pick one today that you may think is unattainable. Pick one that you think that you can't get to, and I want you to do that because one day in your future, I want to tell you, you might just get there. You probably will be able to accomplish it time and time again. We see people fail. We see people mess up. We see people fall. And they fail at life not because they didn't try. They don't fail at life because they didn't work hard. But they fail because they just didn't reach far enough. Because they just didn't dream big. They just didn't stretch beyond what they could see and reach out further to what they actually could be in life. So don't let another day go by without setting a goal and dreaming a big dream because I believe that it will help you develop one of the biggest assets in life and I don't want you to forget this and that is it will help you build faith. Can somebody say faith? faith. It will help you build a strong faith. How many know that faith will take you a long way? Faith will take you to places that you never imagined. It will take you beyond your dreams. So many people have learned time and time again that life is not about luck, but it's about faith. It's about seeing things that aren't there yet, believing that they are there already. Faith favors people that reach beyond, reach beyond their own understanding. Faith favors those that are persistent. I want to tell you, faith leans not on the side of chance, but on the side of choice. The side of those that made a decision to believe in what they don't see and decide to walk in the path anyway. Because we walk by faith and not by sight. So regardless of what people have to say to you, regardless of the naysayers, regardless of what your present circumstance may be showing you, walk the path of faith. Because faith will lead you to places that you never imagined. It will tear down bears and it will move you to another level. So that's my take on it all. I just want to say to you is that we here at the church on behalf of our senior pastor, on behalf of our staff, on behalf of everyone here at Mount Zion, we want to say we're proud of you. We want to say we love you. Come on, come on, give them a hand clap today. We're proud of you. We love you. And this is just another chapter in your life. This is just another stepping stone to what God is going to do. So don't let nobody stop you. Don't let the roadblocks get you, and don't let fear get in your way, because fear is just false evidence appearing real. Because at the end of the day, God is the ruler of your life, and if you keep God first, God will do the rest. How many know that if you keep God first, he'll do the rest for him? How many you believe that God is going to take these students to another level today? Oh, so again, yeah. we salute you. We thank you. And I'm going to ask it. Come on, let's, Aldridge Jones let's just stand up for a moment and give God a great big hand praise. Give Pastor Larry a great big hand praise. As everyone stand to the attention of God, Pastor Larry has said something very powerful. He talked about faith. And Sister Ramona Robinson talked about detours that occur and will occur in your life. And she was just not talking to the graduate. She was talking to all of us. 
that there's distractions. Say distractions. Say there's detours in our lives. And they're not meant sometimes to encourage us, but they're meant to discourage us. But she said to these young people, what you've got to do is, is what I told Pastor Larry, I, I led him in this kind of teaching, him and Pastor Dan in the back. Wherever you go, stay in church. Wherever you go, whether it's Toledo, whether it's Atlanta, whether it's Spama, whether it's Morehouse, whether it's Rochester, New York, wherever you go, find your church and go to church every Sunday. Have I got a witness? And Pastor Larry says something very powerful. He said, you can't move in life without faith in God. You've got to have faith in Jesus Christ. You've got to believe that he is who he is and a rewarder of them who diligently seek after him. The old folks had it this way. He'll be a way out of no way. He'll be a rocket when your land is weary. He'll be water when you're thirsty. And then when you go hungry on campus, he'll somehow give you a meal ticket. And somebody will send you a check every now and then. But you've got to believe that he is who he said he is. He will walk with you. He will talk with you. And when temptation come your way, he'll stand between you and the temptation. And he'll say, Satan, get your hands away. And all for this person. This is my property. I've got something for that person coming down the pike. And no weapon formed against you will prosper have I got a witness in the house but you've got to walk with the Lord you've got to talk with the Lord you've got to stay with the Lord you have to have trust in the Lord you've got to believe what the Lord says in his word you've got to live for God and then one day you're going to have to die for God young man by the name of Ryan. Ryan just wrote an article in the Plain Dealer yesterday looking at the situation of our city. McShepherd, Ryan McShepherd. Ryan McShepherd wrote a marvelous article that everybody ought to read. The boy is only 36 years old and has interpreted our times in this city like never before. He talked about the Russians who had invaded our situation and our context in Cleveland and got news out there towards where people start stop voting for certain people and stop voting at all. And black people didn't go to vote because they read some of this corrupt news. He's 30 some years old. You can be somebody at a young age I started preaching when I was 12 years of age I had a collar on I was walking around going to revival telling people for God I'll live and for God I'll die as a kid and I've been on that road ever since and God has taken me through academics bachelor's degree two master's degree an earned doctorate degree and an honorary doctor degree. I've written books. In fact, I got three of them coming out this year. Pastor Larry got one coming out this year. How did we do it? We had Jesus on our side. We had Jesus on our side. We had Jesus on our side. He is not dead. He is alive like he said he would rise from the grave and he's alive forevermore and I'll stop by to tell you I know he's alive because I spoke to him this morning and he said everything is going to be all right don't worry I'm still in charge of this world as every head is bowed take the person by the hand next to you this is a very serious moment God wants somebody to walk out here with him Jesus wants somebody to walk out here knowing that he is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus doesn't want anybody to perish. He said, I died for you. He is the good shepherd. We are his sheep. What makes him our shepherd 
It is the fact that he died on the cross for our sins, paid the penalty so we could continue walking along this barren land. And if you're here today, you need Jesus Christ in your life.